Hello, my name is Willie Wrinkle. Today we're going to learn some Lily Pond. We're going to make a simple lead sheet for the tune Bye Bye Blackbird. Now let's add some boilerplate. We've got to declare the version, which is 2.24.4, and it's a good idea to declare the language for note names, and we're going to use English. Now let's create the header. This is going to contain the title and composer. So we declare the header, curly braces, and then there's the title property. And this is the tune Bye Bye Black Bird. And in the composer, we're going to, it is Henderson and Dixon. Let's add some notes. First, we declare the score block. Within that, we declare a relative notes block relative to middle C. That's what the C and the apostrophe mean. And now we're ready for the actual notes. The first note in Bye Bye Blackbird is an A quarter note. Lily Pond represents pitches by letters, A for instance, and durations by numbers. So a quarter note corresponds to four. An eighth note would be eight, a sixteenth note would be six, a whole note would be one, and so on. So let's render this one note. So let's open up the PDF, split screen, and close the Explorer. So we can see it's almost perfect. The issue here is that the A is an octave lower than I would like. To raise it by an octave, you just add the apostrophe, and now it's in the octave I was expecting. Now, the, the three beats left in this measure are all A quarter notes. Lily Pond doesn't need the duration if it doesn't change from the previous note. For example, this bar is four A quarter notes. You only need to define the, def the duration for the first note. The rest of them can just be A's. And then we save, and that renders a bar of A quarter notes. If we keep going, the next bar is a B flat, also a quarter note, so no duration is required. A quarter note, and then an A half note. Here we do need to provide the duration because it's changed from quarter to half. Let's render this, and here we see the B flat in the in the uh, accidental. Now th that's there because this melody is in the key of F. To set that key signature, all you've got to do is use the key command here, followed by pitch, followed by the quality. Now the accidental is gone and is now represented in the key signature. A personal preference of mine is I prefer to see 4-4 instead of C. Uh, to, to have Lily Pond render that, you use the numeric time signature command. And now we see it's rendered as 4-4. So let's keep going. The next bar is the same rhythm, but different pitches. So it's an A quarter note. We've got to provide the 4. Followed by a G quarter note and a G half. Let's render that one. And then the next bar, a G quarter note. We need to provide the 4 to an F quarter note, duration is not needed here, to an F half. Now if you're like me, you like to have control over line breaks and general formatting. Lily Pond allows you to manually trigger a line break using the break command. So we see this here. It's not going to change the rendering here because it's not, there's not another bar afterwards. So now if we add the next line, we have an F whole note to a G whole note, duration not needed, to an F half, to an E half. This one, we don't need to provide the duration, but it's tied to the next bar. To tie a note, you use the tilde, that's shift, and then the top left of the keyboard. Tied to an E whole note. 
and if we save that, we see we've now rendered two lines. And this first eight bars, I would call it the A section. To render the, the section bar line, just use the section command. And now we see the end of the section has two lines. Now let's add the chords. First, we need to modify the score block a little bit. We need to add double angle brackets, and we need to put the note block within that. The double angle brackets tell Lily Pond that what's going to occur within them is going to occur simultaneously. So we have the notes, and simultaneous to that, we're going to create a new chord names object. We're going to use the chord mode. It's very similar to the relative notes mode. Uh, entering chords is exactly the same as entering pitches with the added property of chord name. And so that's expressed by pitch, duration, and then a colon, and then the chord name. So the first bar of Bye Bye Blackbird is an F major 7. So we'll do the pitch, an F, the duration, one bar, or a whole note, and then the chord name after the colon is mage 7. We save that, and now we've rendered an F delta, the delta meaning major 7. If we wanted that to extend over two bars, we can just multiply the initial duration by 2, and we save it, and nothing has changed because we don't have a chord change after this, but that is now rendering two full bars of F major 7. The third bar is going to have a two beats of G minor 7. So we do a G and then two for two beats, minor 7, and then two beats of C7. And you'll notice here, for the C7, we didn't provide the duration. We only provided the pitch, a colon, and the chord name, 7. The last bar of this line is a whole note's worth of F6 is one way to think about it. And let's render that. And then we have the harmony for the first line of Bye Bye Blackbird. Thanks for listening. Let me know if there's anything else you'd like me to cover. Have a great day.